Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 3 episode number 13 and book 4 episode number 1 reaction. Alright, uh, this is going to be a little bit weird because it has 13 episodes and usually I do 2 episodes per week. So yeah, like, you know, I'll be doing 1 today, uh, 13 today and 1 today. And then like you know, from the next week it will be 2, 3 and like this up until I think season 4 also has 13 episodes. So yeah, that's how it's going to go. So yeah, this will be kind of a little bit unusual, like you know, the final episode of book three and the first episode of book four, and we had to both of those in in this like you know in this video. So okay, um, the previous episode, previous two episodes were really I have to say really action packed, tense, uh, because um a lot of things happened. First of all, uh. Zahir and his crew they went they were like you know going to the uh, air temple and uh, you know like a kind of took them hostage in a way to bring Korra to them lure Korra in and uh, Tenzin tried to fight you know but unfortunately uh, he was the only proper fighter there all the others you know they were either learning uh, or not that good. I guess you could say Kaya was also a you know, bit of a better fighter But Kaya and Tenzing these two were the only ones so unfortunately they weren't able to do anything to the four of them and uh, They like you know Tenzin by the end of it. It was all on Tenzin and he wasn't able to uh, Stop the four of them at the same time. It's impossible. He was doing a really good job He might have been able to take two of them, but four no, I, it's un impossible and Zahir's team is pretty strong so yeah like you know that that was what happened and they got uh, like you know taken hostage you could say and uh, Kola was, Kora was lured in and uh, you know like Kora said that okay I'll surrender and uh, you know like uh, Lin and all the others and Lin and uh, Su Yin all of them were there with Kora to save her as soon as the hostages are safe but Zahir's team they were able to trick them back by using fake hostages and uh, yeah that was a mess and Korra was captured by the end of it and uh, you know like uh, yeah it's it's like it's really bad and uh, like you know we, we did get Tenzin back but we still have not found the other airbenders and Korra has been captured and in the end we kind of see like you know oh another thing happened i forgot about that completely um flea you know flea was like you know flea died in the previous episode and uh, the way she was like you know killed was really insane you know i've never seen anything like that before in any type of anime or anything where they like, you know, kind of enclosed her face using that armor and she self-destructed that was crazy that scene was crazy and uh, yeah as soon as that happened uh, Zahir uh, was able to break the shackles of the earthly you know like things that were holding him down and he was able to fly he was able to go to that like you know void or whatever and uh, yeah he easily took Korra away and now I don't know what the hell he's planning he said something about poison it looks like mercury that he's like you know using and I don't know what he's going to do now let's see what happens yeah this is episode number 13 of legend of Korra book 3 this is the final episode of this season so let's get started all right I'll be putting the subtitles in the time I hear sync it to whichever is a preference and let's start all right here's the countdown three two one go hmm Yep. Oh yeah, Bodhi learned lava bending. That also happened. Quite a few things happened. Venom of the Red Lotus. Okay. Oh my god. What?
What? Oh no! They're going to try to kill her! Yeah! Wait! Oh my god. Wait, didn't... Isn't she already cut off from the Avatar cycle? Yeah, we saw what happened in Ba Sing Se. That was amazing. What you did. Alright. Ah. Like, I really like this crew, you know? Like, Zahir and... Oh, wait, what the... What is she doing here? I really liked, you know, Zahir and his crew, and now I'm like, oh my god, they're the same. Like, what the hell? Oh my god, they're injured, yeah. Um, Cora is, yeah. Oh god. Can we get a little help from our spirit buddies? God damn. Yeah, it is like Mercury. I feel, I feel like it is probably Mercury. Oh my god! Yep, she's going into the... Oh. I really hope, like, you know, she becomes so strong that he com she completely wipes out all of them at, like, using one attack or something. I really hope that happens. These people are too cocky and I, I really don't like them now. Because... Oh, God. Oh yeah, they're also going to help uh, try to save them. Yeah, that's good. Okay, good, good. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh no. What the? Oh my god, she's getting hallucinations. Yeah, okay. Great. Oh! Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. All right, here we go. Oh, nice, come on. Milo. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. It's <laughs> like I can hold a bowl. Okay. Oh no. Whoa, what the? Who? Oh, they're here. Nice. Yeah, you, you can't do anything. These are metal benders here. Oh! There you go. You were wanting some excitement. There you go. You got your excitement. What? <laughs> Bolin! Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Let's go. Yeah, we need to get Korra back. Oh, yeah, Jinorakan. Yeah. Okay, oh my god. Here she... Oh my god, I really hope this backfires. I really hope this backfires. I want... These people too get the taste of their own medicine so much. There you go, come on. Like, you know, they, they did a huge mistake. All right, come on, just destroy them. Like, they weren't even able to properly take Tenzin out. Like, you know, they were struggling with Tenzin. And now Korra is in the Avatar state. What the hell are they going to do? Yeah, run away like the- Oh my god, great. Oh. Oh my god. Oh yeah, the- Oh. My god, this reminds me of the whole um, uh, Aang versus... Um, what was his name? The Fire Lord. I forgot his name. <laughs> Damn. Whoa! Whoa. Alright, nice. No. Oh my god. We need a healer. Like, oh yeah, Kaya is a healer, but she's not in that. Alright, oh god. Come on, uh, bowling can lava bend now. So. Let's go. Lava bender versus lava bender. Nice, come on. Ooh. Yeah? Alright, let's see. Let's see your lava bending. <laughs> the way he winked. <laughs> Alright. Oh! Yeah, your airbending couldn't do... Oh my god. Ah. Uh. Ah, I was going to tell, like, he couldn't even defeat Tenzin. What is he going to do to Korra? Oh god. I feel like the poison is probably affecting her. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh no 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 no! Oh my god! Yeah, the poison is affecting her. That's why she's not able to properly utilize her power. It 
shut up. I, I really, I really don't like him now. Like, you know, like he was such a great character up until the middle of it. Just. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Are we going to make a tornado or something? <laughs> Just swipe him out of the sky. Oh my god, I feel, oh my god, I think they're really going to do that. Okay, well. <laughs> Oh! Oh! Like, I guess she could use her sweat or something, just like Katara did, you remember? Oh no, there's water. Oh great. Yo, move! This literally in water! She can freeze you! Lightning! Wait, when did he unlock that? What? What happened? Wait, can he already? Can you? No, no, he never lightning bended. This is the first time. Damn, everyone's unlocking powers. Oh! Come on. Oh, Marco's here. Good. All right, lightning and lava, let's go. Oh, perfect. That, that's what he, okay. Oh God. Oh, nice, damn. Well, seems like you're going down alone then. All right, come on. Oh. Damn. Uh. Okay. S someone. Oh, okay, okay. Oh my god. Yeah, we'll see. Alright, the airbender. No, wait. Oh god. Oh, he's using the same technique. Come on. Yes, there you go. The tornado is coming. All right, let's see you handle that big of a... Oh my God, someone please. Yes, there you go. Yeah? Okay, let's see what you can do. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. Yes, come on. Drag him down. Yes. Drag him down. Back to where he belongs. Ah. Oh. Well, that was satisfying a little bit. All right, capture him, B -b put him in chains. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Oh, my God.
little annoying piece of crap. Oh, I hate like why does always these Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, we can extract it from her. Hopefully. Probably. So it is Mercury or something like that. Ah, oh, God. Oh. My god, I'm 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 gonna f I'm gonna lose my mind now. Damn. He taking the his whole battle and the way he was captured reminds me so much of Fire Lord um Oz Ozai, I think yeah that was his name. I forgot his name for a second there. Uh, reminds me of Ozai so much. <laughs> Damn, he shuts eye bags and all. Oh. There's a wheelchair. Okay, two weeks. Yeah, like, you know, it's not much time. Like, she needs more time. <sighs> Wait, what, Genora? Wait, what's happening to Genora? Oh, is she? Oh, Rohan is so big now. Oh, wait, Raikou's here. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shoot trees. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Yeah, what about Bossing Se? So, so, wait, what happened to Gazan and... Yeah, that, oh. Oh, really? That, that's what you're thinking, Raiko? What, what happened, in, in, like, in, in the beginning of season two, I think? Yeah, what happened then? Okay, she's getting her tattoos, all right. Ah. <laughs> yeah, she did so much. Damn, I feel like Cora's mental state is a lot worse than her physical. She looks so depressed. Hmm. Okay, nice. Hmm. 
Mm. She's mentally stressed. Oh, Ang! <laughs> she looks so much like Ang. Wow. Okay. She looks completely like Ang. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> okay, um one thing I wasn't able to I'm pretty sure I'll get my answer in the next episode. Uh so what happened to Cora? Like can she not I guess can she not bend anymore or like what's happening to her? Like or yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably something like that. As they said, she needs uh time to get back on her feet and that probably means she is unable to do anything now so yeah that's why she's so depressed you know like thankfully i i, I don't think her bending power is gone but it's probably that she cannot use it now or something like that so all right okay so oh my god this episode no like, like I don't understand why why they always do this. I don't understand. Like you know, the like you know, like this. Like I thought, like finally we're going to get like a antagonist character who will have like, uh, what can I say? Like their own goals, but they will be at least, uh, what can I say? Genuine or, um, yeah, genuine. You could say or have integrity, like. By the end of this season, you know, Zahir became like one of those petty, like, you know, petty villains. He just became like that. I feel like, like you know, like, like her, his own goal was only like the, the only thing that he was focusing on. And that was it. You know? And his, his point of view about this world is so flawed. Like I'm, I'm baffled. First of all, he thinks that everything can be like you know everything will be okay if leaders or people who are in, on the top can be brought down that is such a poor excuse of like you know like such such a such a poor um what can i say point of view like you know thought of like you know like i i, I don't understand like how how what how what does he think like you know, what's going to happen if like i understand if leaders are gone definitely there there are bad like you know leaders and everything and uh, you know like um it's 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 just going to be what can i say like you know like those people will go down but at the same time there'll be a lot of good people who are also going to go down and you know what like let's okay let's let's take in like you know let's let's uh, imagine a world which zahiri was envisioning there won't be any leaders everyone will um you know like be equal work together this that all that stuff let us envision that i don't think that's possible yeah like you know i i can't even envision it like it's impossible as as like you know we've seen this multiple times before in not only avatar but multiple animes that people like you know like people cannot like they, there cannot be any kind of situation where peace will exist for a long moment of time like, you know always people will always try to find conflict like, you know like, you know however peace this world is at people will always go there as long as there's people conflict will exist like he 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 he's such a good like an actor you could say like you know he's he reads books you know this zahir you know he reads so much about guru lahima this and that why the hell does he not understand this simple concept that conflict will always be whenever there is people you know you cannot completely like you know destroy conflict that's impossible that's why what the avatar always do is try to find balance you know like the avatar never tries to completely wipe off evil from this world because i'm pretty sure every avatar knows that it's impossible that's why they've tried to find balance in everything that is the whole thing this guy like you know reads so much about guru lahima and like you know all that stuff and like you know he's an educated what can i say like, like you know, a very very competent villain but it baffles me how he doesn't understand this simple concept like 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 i don't know 
So, okay, you know what, like, you know, taking down leaders is definitely going to kind of like, you know, like bring a lot of these things, like in these unreasonable situations into, you know, uh, what can I say, into a lot of, uh, like, you know, it's going to, like, you know, uh, what can I say, like, it's going to reduce these type of unreasonable situations. For example, we know Raikou, the Earth Queen, Queen. these are like typical examples of, like, you know, a stupid leader and and a, a completely worthless leader you know like raiku being the stupid one uh earth queen being the like you know completely worthless one so you know like i understand these people if you take them down you know like the, the world will definitely be a, a better place but but you know like people always tries to follow someone you know like they can if they're like, you know, they, they always will try to follow like and i i don't know why but you know like i i feel like what he was trying to do was just going to make him a leader by the end of it you know like he was going to bring down all the leaders and by the end of it he himself will have to take the position of the leader like you know i don't think a world can exist where there's no leaders like you know people always try to follow someone you know like there's always needs to be someone who leads the people and that's how everything works well i don't know i i can't even imagine a world where there's no leaders i cannot i cannot you know it's impossible to imagine such a world it will be really good, but I don't think that's possible as well. So all these things that he were envisioning and everything, you know, I don't think these are possible. So, okay, I guess you could say he was trying the impossible, but you know, for that, just killing these people, even even harming, uh, like you know, Avatar Korra, that's wrong. You 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 just like you know, kind of, kind of, like you know, completely destroyed a city. Ba Singh say you just made that whole city go down and chaos just because of your petty ideals just because of your envisioning like you know the future like this just because of that you killed so many innocent people you know not only there you messed you know you you, you like you know completely brought in the uh, air like you know what Tenzin and his family into this whole mess you, you tried to harm them as well and by the end of it you're trying to uh, harm Korra like this was his vision was this her, his vision you know, this this was how he was thinking. He was he was thinking of making a world a better place on a uh, like you know on 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 uh, a value of uh, what do you call it like you know on 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 like uh, like you know like what can I say like on other sacrifice yeah that that's what what he, what he was trying to do like I don't know I I I I really loved Zahir as a character up until the seventh or eighth episode and then everything started going down in a bad way and I I feel like in the final episode in today's episode. He he just he just shows his inner ugliness, you know, especially in the final section where he sees he's gone completely crazy. And you know what? I feel like this probably happened in such a like you know he, his character went took such a turn most probably because of Flea's death. I feel like the shackles that was binding him to the world, you know, to the uh, earth, you know, the earthly uh, whatever you call it, like shackles, you know, that was actually good for him. Breaking out of that made him completely go crazy. You know, like, Flea's death completely changed him, I feel like. And, yeah, like, you know, he, he became reckless and he became more, what can I say, like, this possessed demon type of a character. And, yeah, like, this last section we saw, he, he was just completely crazy. He was just, yeah, so, that, such a, such a great character being reduced to this by the end of it. Uh, so yeah now okay uh, this book we, we uh, episode we saw what happened uh, first of all Korra was in danger and uh, we get to know Zahid's plan he plans to end the avatar cycle by just putting the poison and when she gets into the avatar's dead he's going to kill her like mm -hmm. him completely breaking the avatar cycle now I feel like I probably did I have like a wrong understanding as far as I know remember Korra wasn't like you know yeah, due to uh, the previous episode, wasn't she already broken out of the Avatar cycle? So, like, I don't know, was that my misunderstanding or something? Like, I knew, uh, up until now, I knew, like, Korra, like, you know, this is the final Avatar. There won't be any more Avatar after this, because we saw in, uh, you know, like, season 2 what happened by the end of it. So, I don't know. Like... You know when uh, Unalak like just took everything, not Unalak, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, Unalak, Rava, the, the, that whole like you know season, the ending of it, 
so i don't know like you know was that my misunderstanding or something but anyways um zahir administers the poison into her and it like you know, I, I was really waiting for like you know i i really wanted like this whole thing to kind of flip back and you know just or just destroying all of them but yeah like the poison really affected her so by the end of it she was tired she wasn't able to carry on attacking so yeah that was a problem but okay that was that and on the other side and jinora kind of looked at it through his spirit her spirit form she cracked cora down and uh, they were planning to get out of here uh while uh bolin's crew they they come to that place you know they reach the place and they go to rescue jinora and the others while cora is like you know very much struggling and after administering the poison she's getting hallucinations like you know sees all the previous enemies um uh unalak um Va Ra uh, vatu and uh, uh what, what was the other guy's name I forgot his name, the, the, the villain in first uh, the first season. Anyways, never mind, that guy. Um, so, yeah, he, she's hallucinating and it's, it's going crazy. She's going to the Avatar state, coming back, going to the Avatar state, coming back, and all the like, Zahi's crew is just waiting for her to go into the state. While on the other side, Jinora tricked this guy, like, you know, the, the guards, and said that, oh, I need water, <laughs> while nabbing the key. Thankfully, you know, they, they would have gotten caught, I feel like. But thankfully, um, Su, uh, Suyin and uh, Lin comes in and helps them out. <laughs> I love the scene where Bolin just, like, you know, like Suyin goes and hugs um, Opal. And Bolin just comes and just shoves, shoves her away. <laughs> that scene was hilarious. Oh my god. Alright, um, so yeah, everyone's like, you know, safe, kind of. And uh, next we go to find uh, Cora. While Cora there is struggling and uh, she was able to break the chains. And uh, like, I, I, like and I was very glad at that moment because they were so much underestimating Cora. And Cora in Avatar State, even though she's spoiled, and she was able to just wipe them off that whole place. And um, uh, what's his name? Um, Zahir actually had actually to run away. He actually had to run away from there because there was not much space. She couldn't, he couldn't fly around like he was. So he had to actually run away from there. And uh, like, you know, everyone just came in and Marco and Bolin, there, they were there. And Marco and Bolin were like, all right, we're going to handle these two, um, Gazan and the girl, while you, know, you guys go and try to help Korra. And... Uh, Okay, while Korra and Zahi were like, you know, like fighting like in mid-air. And as I said, that scene reminded me of Ozai's battle with Aang, the final battle. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, the two battles that we were seeing, Gazan versus um, Bolin and Marco versus the girl. I, I always forget the girl's name. I think it was, it was something, I forgot. Anyways, um, we see that battle and... Uh, like Bolin was very easily able to like you know hold his ground against Gazan, even though like you know previously Gazan was more like you know stronger and but Bolin also learned lava bending. So yeah, like you know, the, the, their fight was very what can I say like you know close. Very there, you know, the the power were kind of close, but I feel like Marco was a lot stronger than the girl here. Because first of all, he was completely, I guess, because there was no water there. As he said, that there's no water here. And the girl was kind of, like, you know, just trying to run away. And, like, you know, her power was not that much. While Marco was completely dominating the, uh, like, you know, fight. And uh, even after they fall underneath and there was water in it, Marco turned that uh, thing completely around to his advantage because he can use lightning now. I feel like... This was the first time he even used it, and he himself was surprised, I think. You know, like, he just zapped the whole part, and, you know, water conducts electricity, and there you go. So, this was a very disadvantageous battle for the girl. Because, first of all, there was no water there, and he was using firebending. Number two, even after she found water, Marco just using, used lightning, 
which was always advantageous over water and was easily able to defeat him while Bolin was having trouble with the Gazan because their bad fight, like you know, their powers were extremely similar and Bolin has just learned to use it and Gazan being the person ha who has been using it for so long he was easily a lot stronger than Bolin here so Marco comes in and helps Bolin out and uh, yeah by the end of it we were able to defeat him and the whole place kind of started falling apart and all and while all of this was happening uh, over there Korra versus Zaheer and uh, the battles were amazing the battle was amazing even though the poison was seeping in in her body he was she was able to fight like that you know and uh, yeah it, it was amazing and like by the end of it she wasn't able to carry on that's when Zaheer got his opportunity I'm pretty sure if she kept fighting like that and the poison didn't affect her she would have probably been able to de defeat Zaheer at that battle because as I was saying like Zaheer himself was struggling against Denzin what can he do against Korra but the problem here was Korra was poisoned that was a problem and uh, yeah even you know with that she was able to uh, you know almost defeat um, Zaheer but yeah like you know like uh, she, by the end of it she falls she isn't able to do anything while Jinora comes up with an idea I think that was Jinora wasn't it or was it Kai either way you know, they, comes up, they come up with an idea that we you know that previously we were not many people we, the air nomads were not that much you know, we few of them were the uh, you know had new airbending but now that there's so many airbenders you know, we can do this so they like made a mini tornado like you know all of them and however strong Zaheer is however like you know uh, uh, what can I say uh, like you know he can fly I understand but still so many people you making a tornado yeah he was bound to just lose at that moment so he gets sucked in he even she even tries to take Korra and just run away again like, you know like a coward he tries to run away I guess but yeah like from his point of view I, I guess that was like the the best way like you know to handle this situation obviously get out of that situation but yeah it sucks him in and by the end of it Korra also just I, I just love that scene so much you know when they when he sees that he's unable to do anything to Korra because Korra is sucked in by the tornado and he's like all right let's try to run away and tries to fly off but Korra just uses the chain and grabs him and just bashes him to the ground and that was fantastic and uh, yeah and then the earthbenders just stopped him while uh, yeah and i hated uh, zahid at this moment like you know this this whole section this final section he became one of those typical villains who just after losing kept yapping about this and that he he, he was reduced to that 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 level i don't like that you know like, you know he like you know, he was he was such a great character and after being defeated he became one of those sore losers who just kept yapping about oh like yeah haha he's she's already dead and nothing you can do about it it's too late the poison's been in her system for so long and just keeps laughing like a maniac that's that's and he's like oh the lead rotors has went won like he got reduced to that you know from such a great character he gets reduced to that but you could say i guess you could also say that uh, that i guess that kind of shows that he himself is also someone who who just fell into that like you know into into the darkness by the end of it you know like however i guess you could say noble or just his vision was he wasn't able to keep going in that direction he he he, he took a wrong choice by the end of it and he fell into that darkness again and just became like one of those typical annoying villains by the end of it those sore losers who are even after losing just keeps yapping about how i'll get you next time or oh like you know this isn't over yet or i'll like yeah this is already over i we have won this this type of a villain that's what he got reduced to so yeah it's probably he 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 just he just lost his way by the end of it he completely lost his way and as I said before again, I feel like Flea's death probably has a lot of uh, a big role to play in this. Like up until Flea was there, you know, he he was a lot more calm and collected. And after her death, like, you know, after breaking the shackles, 
he he just lost his way now this is just one interesting thing i i have heard like and i've seen this uh, quote you could say before as well where they kind of say that um like what can i say like you know like people are not free you know there's no people who's free if you think of it in that way each and every person is somehow shackled and uh, like th there was like a quote i remember from something i heard where they said like you know true freedom is when someone is shackled by something or something like that some kind of a quote like that i i think and like you know people can like a you know, person can bring the best of them themselves when he is shackled by something and uh, I I feel like that that probably is something that could what can I say it could be applied to Zahir here as well like up until he was shackled by his mortal like you know like his earthly desires and all he he was a character who I don't know I feel like he was such a better character but as soon as he got that taste of freedom that like you know he was able to break that shackle I feel like he wasn't able to handle that freedom like it takes a lot for a person to be completely free and be able to handle it i think you know like freedom as as they say like you know like freedom cannot be easily gotten some every person is somehow shackled by something that's what they call earthly desires you know like for example we have our loved ones they are the shackles to us they they kind of bound us to our earth that's why ang himself wasn't able to break out of the shackle and you know like the whole thing with guru patik he wasn't able to go to that place and he was still shackled by the end of it by katara so i feel like that shackle kind of helps a lot of people but if you are able to break out of that shackle and really reach that level that enlightenment or whatever you say you know like you can i guess become someone who is oh, what can i say like who's the ultimate you no know, you can unlock that ultimate uh, like go to that ultimate place or whatever you know that is possible but for people who somehow get taste of that freedom who become truly free a lot of people probably can't handle that and i feel like zahir was one of them he wasn't able to handle that freedom he got by the end of it and he just came crashing down and just got reduced to this so i don't know this is just my thought i i feel like he wasn't able to handle the freedom that he got by the end of it so yeah like you know people i guess should know their limits that he wasn't able to like it was i probably thought that yeah i will be able to go to that place but unfortunately he wasn't because yeah in the end we see how he becomes this petty villain who is just thinking about himself not about the world i guess it's just like oh we have won like you know the red lotus have won he she's already dead and then they like you know take out uh, like you know uh, uh, suyin and lin comes in and uh, i think inora said that you can uh, like you know, there was metal that they use so you can help her out and they extract the metal mercury whatever it was from cora and cora is alive and here again like you know i i just hated him so much the hate in this portion he keeps yapping like you know about no you don't understand the revolution has already begun chaos is the natural order of like yeah like like uh, what this wasn't your initial goal what the hell is this guy even saying chaos wasn't his initial goal like he i, I don't know where the hell he went to he, he became completely crazy i feel like by the end of it and it's sad you know it's so sad such a good character being reduced to this now i don't know what the hell ha oh my god i love bowling just stuff to put, put put a sock in him <laughs> oh that was funny uh, but yeah like i don't know what happened to gazan and the girl i'm guessing they died most probably who knows but yeah but what's his name um, zahir is alive he was just captured i really hope we like he doesn't break out or something i really hope that doesn't happen i i, I don't know like enough of Zahir. <laughs> I don't want to see more of him. Like really, like you know, the the way the, the the as they kind of reduced him to a typical villain, I really don't like him anymore. Like I I I, th I saw potential in him to become such a great character, but it's just that that by the end of it, he also fell into the same same like you know just started walking the same path as the other villains. But yeah. 
So, and after that, we kind of see that Kasami is helping Korra, and Korra is just depressed. And uh, as I said, it's not her physical body, her physical harm that the uh, body got. It's, that's not that's probably bothering her. Her mental state is in completely desert, completely in in like in a very bad situation. And uh, I think she's probably unable to bend now currently. That's why she's so depressed. I feel like that's what's happening. And he she can't even move herself. I guess she's in wheel wheelchair. So all of this is kind of probably just putting so much strain on her the stress completely so yeah now we come back like Jinora is getting her tattoo we come to the, in front of the temple Raiku is here and uh, like yeah like she I don't know what what to say like he's he's just annoying I guess at this point you know like he does try to like you know cheer Korra up I guess that's good but yeah like, <laughs> I don't know what to feel about him, but never mind that. Um, like everyone, everyone tries to cheer Cora up, you know. Like Jinora, not Jinora, sorry, Ikki Milo, they're also there. Uh, uh, what's their name? Lin, Asami, and uh, yeah, that was that. And they, they kind of, you know, go to Jinora's. Getting her tattoo, and she gets become an becomes an airbending master, I guess. Yeah, and uh, yeah, everyone's happy while Cora is just sad. She just tear drop falls from her eyes, and I'm I'm guessing it's probably that. Like since she she feels she probably feels, uh, what can I say? Like she 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 feels that she cannot do anything now. She probably feels like a burden or something, I guess, and that's what's bothering her. You know, like. She's the avatar and she, like we've seen before as well, she has this uh, sense of responsibility or something. She always doesn't like when she becomes a burden to others and being like the avatar, she, as I said, she, she has like a huge sense of responsibility. So seeing that she cannot do anything and she's like a burden to others is probably the thing that's really troubling her now. So it's mental health, uh, mental care that she needs now. And uh, some rest as well. So hopefully everything goes well, and everything like she be, jumps back to her original self. From uh, you know in book four, I'm I'm sure the first few episodes will be her just recuperating and like you know becoming uh, healthy again. But I'm sure she'll be back. We'll see. So yeah, that was uh, the final episode, episode thirteen of book two. Let's start. Uh, book three. Let's start the final season. That is book four, episode number one. Of the legend of Korra. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's start. Alright, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. What the? Wait, what? Damn, is this like an advertisement? Avatar Cora Park. Ah, oh, she has a... Wow. Three years? Oh yeah, three years, okay. Spirit wise, ah, uh, ah, uh, nice. <laughs> it's like it's like an advertisement. Ah, uh, okay. Is that Jinora? Wait, everyone grew up. Who the hell is this? Oh. 
Nice. Green how? This off. Yeah. Oh my god. What the hell? Oh my god. Super hit? Yeah, okay. Ah! No! King stuff. Wait, is that Mako? Is that Mako? Yeah, that's that's Mako, isn't it? Yeah, that is Mako. Yeah, that is. There you go. I I wasn't able to recognize him. For where's Bolin? No. Oh. oh. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Great. Oh my God. I really hope this guy's a lot better than his great aunt. Vera, oh my god, that girl. In season three. Mostly. Ah! I don't think that doesn't make him feel better, I guess. <laughs> what the? Who is... Oh my god, these are like just bandits and all. Wow. Oh no. Just looting them. Okay. Didn't we... The Kuvira or something was here? I think Kuvira was supposed... Wait, what? Wait, they're like superheroes. What the hell? Is that Kai? That's Kai, isn't it? And that's Jinora? No. Wait, wait, what's happening? Who are these? Okay. Wait, what is Jinora's tattoos? Oh no, that's Opa! Oh my god, sorry, sorry, ah. Don't underestimate them. Yep. Yeah, that's Opal, sorry, I was, ah. Uh. Hmm. Well, oh, what is this? Ah, Bolin! Wow, this is a nice little time skip. Oh, this is Kavira. <laughs> Varric. Julie's still here. How is she still just. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh god, what's happening? <laughs> Rocks. Well, we are earth vendors. Oh damn.
Oh, there they are. Oh my god. Oh! Oh, is that metal band? Oh god, look at that. She has like ammunition in her. <laughs> wow, that's a cool way to just apprehend criminals, you know? Just put a metal <laughs> metal blindfold. Mmm. <laughs> god. Neutralized. All enemy. <laughs> Wait, she can magnetize? Metals as well? What the? Okay. Oh my god. Oh, she's still magnet. Okay. Wait, then... The... Oh my god. Oh my god, I feel like this girl is going to be a problem later on. Yeah, I feel like, oh my god, this is one of those people. She's one of those. Great. Wow. Okay, another villain. As soon as we get into... C okay, she's definitely going to be the final villain of this arc or whatever. Oh my god, what, <laughs> what the... Huh? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, he seems like a goofy type of character. Wait, what? They're making a tea out of you, okay. I don't think so. Yeah, they're pretty uh, angry, I can see. Yeah. Wow, this guy. Oh no, oh my god. Great. People are here to assassinate him already. Wait, what the- they're throwing pies? I thought they were here to assassinate him. Oh, wait, Kuvira supporter? Great. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of Bolin a little bit. Yeah, he's like Bolin a little bit. Why did he just eat it? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh great, another... God. What the? Oh my god, these are the Kavira. Is her brother? Oh, her brother is also the. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> oh, that's a brother, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, what happened? What? Okay. Yeah. I don't think those are rumors. Right, she's one of those, I probably like a megalomaniac or something. Wait, what? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, the left. Who? Who's this? Right. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh my god, here we go. Again. Great. Just what we needed. Yeah. What the hell? I why is Bolin working for them? Come on, Bolin. Like, ah. Oh, wait, her, his name is Lefty. Okay. Damn, Bolin being just working with them is... I don't know. That's not helping. Oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> what the who oh my god wait bandits have airplanes now oh my god oh great 
Yeah, they're trying to. Okay. Wow. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. They're going to take the supplies. Oh, boy. Ah. Yeah. Yo! Use the airbending, come on! Oh no, I'm not airbending, but the glider, yeah. Oh my god, it got torn! From that blade! Okay, nice. Oh no, he's going to sneeze or something? Oh no, <laughs> I thought left is going to sneeze or something. Uh. Oh no. You know what? I feel like Kuvira maybe sent the bandit. Oh no. Yeah, it might be Kuvira. Maybe she's the one who... I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> ah, great. Oh no, I feel like he'll be like <laughs> he, he probably said something like, Oh, I want yeah. Great. Ah, oh, Skora. <coughs> God damn. Wow. Yeah, okay. Everything seems nice, but I don't know what Kuvira is planning. Uh, he has some huge big plan or something. Oh, great. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. Ah, oh, no. Ah, Naga. It just goes light. Ah. Wait, what? Six months? Oh my, what is it? Wait, what? Oh my god, I was not expecting that. Well, she's like in... <laughs> Alright, she seems pretty fine. Like, I mean, she can bend now again, I can see. So... Okay. But, 
she's not that strong oh my god yeah she didn't get that back that strength back i guess ah uh. She's probably, oh my god, she's probably healed, but I guess she probably did not get back that strength or something, I don't know. I feel like she's probably still needs more healing or something like that. She's not fully, you know, like, didn't fully get her strength back or something, I don't know. But, oh boy, and, and I'm, I'm guessing she's trying to probably just go to different places and trying to you know like he's fighting in these rings and all just to get see like how much she can fight and if she has gotten her strength back or something i don't know all right okay so three years have passed after that and a lot of things have changed completely first of all the airbenders are helping everyone you know uh, avatar Korra is like you know like they've made a statue of her and it's like a Korra park and uh, like everything seems peaceful you know like everything is nice that, that the place where it was overgrown with trees and all you know the spirits were overrunning that place there's it became like a little tourist attraction place i guess people are going there and just spending time with spirits and all so that's nice and everything looks pretty good and uh, asami and future industries has helped a lot and raikyu is pretty happy with everything and uh, the new king, I guess, Prince Wu, who is the nephew? Yeah, nephew. He called uh, the Earth Queen aunt. Nephew of the Earth Queen is going to take, you know, like become the ruler of Ba Sing Se. And uh, there's like they updated the rail system, this and that. Uh, Sami is like, you know, just helping them out. And yeah, everything seems really nice. Um, like we meet Wu, this guy, and uh, he, ah, uh, like he seems so much. What can I say? Like his his character and everything is so much like Bolin, the previous Bolin that we used to know. You know, just joking around, being, <laughs> being like an idiot. You know, just acting like that and just being goofy and all. So yeah i i i'm, I'm probably at, at first i thought probably I, I wouldn't like this guy he's going to be that haughty annoying type of character but i don't know i i'm i'm guessing we might actually like this guy he might he might grow on us little by little um you know because by the end of it like you know what i can guess from the small amount of time that we've spent with him is he's one of those characters who is probably doesn't know anything what he's doing um he he thinks you know like like he, he thinks of him in a very high you know like what can i say a high position he's pretty prideful of himself but at the same time you know i guess he's, he's kind of goofy and like you know um whatever he's doing he has no clue what the hell he's doing like i guess you could say he's someone who could be easily made into a puppet that type of a character so not necessarily i feel like he's going to be someone who i dislike by the end of it because uh, his mannerisms really remind me of bolin and i feel like he's going to grow on us and especially seeing the mako and wu pair you know i feel like she's he's going to probably become like a bolin type of character as time goes on and i don't know maybe mako was going to get reminded of her brother his brother whenever he sees of sees this guy or something because this personality is so similar you know bolin and this guy it's so similar like the way he kind of freaks out at little things and kind of acts like an idiot <laughs> but at the same time you know just i don't know being goofy and all so we'll see now like here's the thing um all's well and good but we still need to kind of judge his character you know that we still don't know it what what is he type like you know bolin was a very nice kind-hearted noble you know person and he still is uh while this guy we still don't know what type of a character he is 
no his personality might be like bolin but we would have actually have to see like is he worthy enough to be the king that's one thing that we have to see and uh, i'm I, i'm pretty sure as they kind of said by the end of it raiku is trying to like you know make a political like you know take take a political advantage of the situation and you know i feel like wu would probably become like a puppet or something but i don't know we'll see um up till now he's okay i guess you know like i i kind of like him you know it's kind of funny and that's it this this decision might change in the future i don't know as i said we'll have to wait to see his actual character is he a kind big hearted ruler is he going to be a kind big hearted ruler or is he or is he going to be a selfish you know um you know just like his 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 aunt is he going to be like that i'll have to judge after seeing him in action but i'm sure we'll get to see that in the future so yeah he tries to flirt with asami at the beginning and just makes fool out of himself <laughs> and then raiku calls him and here we get to see that uh, Marco is acting as his bodyguard, <laughs> as, as because Raiku, you know, just is trying to make, uh, like, you know, political taken political advantage of this king. But that's why he assigned Marco to this, and since Marco is the in the police force of the Republic City Police Department, he has to do everything what Raiku says, you know. Yeah. Now, okay, so that was that, and we get to see like you know how everyone has changed. We get to see Ikki Milo Jinora a little bit and a little flash of them just standing in the crowd, and uh, like Jinora has changed so much. I wasn't like you know it took me a while to actually recognize her. Um, Milo, I wouldn't say he changed. He only has hair, like you know. That's all. Like you know, if you take off his hair, he'll just look like the like you know the, that little Milo that we got to know. <laughs> he, the only thing change he has is that he has hair now, <laughs> and he's gotten a little bit bigger. While Iki, I feel like Iki also is the same. I feel like Jinora looks so different because I guess her hairstyle kind of changed, and she has the uh, tattoo. You know, that's probably why. And uh, yeah, now okay, so. We see Raiku just talking with uh, Wu, and uh, like you know, and uh, while uh, Jin, uh, Asami and Marco was talking, they were talking about Bolin and everyone, and I'm guessing they were also talking about Korra, and uh, yeah. So <laughs> Raiku was telling Wu about how the Earth City is considerably safe. You know, he wouldn't get outright assassinated there if he goes there, but yeah things are still not okay so that was that okay so then we get to see this like you know this place uh this place where like you know there's an, uh, probably one of those uh places from yeah one of those earth kingdom states uh where there, there was some bandits just ransacking someone's store and uh in comes opal and kai I don't know why the hell I wasn't able to recognize Opal. I thought she he was Jin she was Jinora for a moment, but like you know like I don't know why I thought that that was Jinora even though I just saw Jinora a few moments ago. <laughs> but since it was Kai and you know like her, I felt like that was Jinora. And then I'm like, wow, like something feels wrong. That's not Jinora. But you know like I wasn't properly able to put my finger on it. And then when they called her Opal, I'm like, oh my god, that's not Jinora. That's Opal. And I'm like, oh my god, what a mistake I've made. I don't know why I thought that was Jinora. <laughs> but never mind. Even though I just saw her a few moments ago. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> that was my mistake. And uh, we see how they're kind of like superheroes, you could say now. Not superheroes, but people who are just like, you know, flying around helping others. And I really like their new costume because they don't need the, the air, the, 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 the glider. They can just you know use their things but uh, you know like if it gets torn or something it's a problem that which happened in the end you know like guys thing just got torn oh so, yeah now here the next is we what uh, the next is we what we see is like uh, Kuvira the new character from season 3 and uh, Bolin uh, Varric 
Julie and the the guy the what's his name um, I forgot his name the uh, Huyin's uh, sis, uh, son elder son so they're here you know, and they're working for Kuvira now I'm I'm not sure why Bolin probably Bolin got like a job offer from them or something and that's why he he, he was like all right I'm, I'll be helping out people that's why let me do this and like in the outside, it does seem like they're helping people, but Kuvira has some other intentions, which we can see. She's, try she's trying to become like a dictator or something, you know, and she, you know, like seeing her character, it, it makes me think she's probably megalomaniac. She's probably someone like that. And she, she, she looks crazy. The first episode, yeah, I, I don't really like her that much. And she, she'll be a big problem, I can see. She'll probably be the final villain. But um, yeah, now one thing I'm kind of glad that Varric is with Bolin because I'm pretty sure whatever Kubira is trying to do, Varric will easily be able to realize what the hell she's trying to do. So Varric being there, I don't know why, but I really feel like even though Bolin, even if Bolin tr takes a wrong step, hopefully Varric is able to make him realize. I don't know if he'll do that you know, because Varric is a whimsical person, you know, like he helped us out multiple times, but yeah, I feel like he probably won't. <laughs> Even if he, see, he sees something's going wrong, he'll probably try to bail out on his own. And still, but still, him being there, I get a little bit of hope that maybe, like, you know, if Bolin was there alone, I would have been a lot concerned because Bolin has a tendency to trust people. And he, he'll probably just be fooled by Kuvira just to do whatever the hell she wants to. She'll she probably just manipulate Bolin. And by the end of it, you know, just make him make use of him to do something outrageous. So Barry being there gives me a little bit of confidence that maybe that cannot would not happen because Barry is intelligent, you know, he knows what he's doing. But it also kind of makes me concerned that Varric being Varric, he just might try to bail out on his own. So who knows what's going to happen? But I'm glad Varric is there and. Uh, yeah, at least Bolin has someone to ask advice to or something. I don't know. But yeah, now Kuvira, you can see, you know, like uh, there were some bandits trying to like, you know, stop the train and all. And Kuvira just comes out. And I like the way, like the way he, she fights, you know. She just uses those metal plates to just, uh, you know, blindfold them and like stop them. And I can see that she can probably magnetize and demagnetize these metals. It's kind of interesting. And as you can see, she just, like, you know, she has that type of a tendency and like, an attitude to, oh, the great uniter, as they call her. She is just going to control and rule over others. That's the type of personality she has. So she just acts like a, like, you know, like a, like one of those megalomaniac <laughs> leaders. And she's just like, oh, like, you know, you all are under my command, you know. And gives us that snarky smile, you know, that that evil smile, which all villains give us for committing something outrageous. <laughs> all right. Next scene, we get to see Wu. Wu is just, you know, just acting like a fool. <laughs> Talks about spa and everything. Mark was just like, "What the hell? Why am I stuck here?" But Mark was like, "You know what? Thankfully, like I'll just become a detective after, like you know, just transporting him." that my job will end here and I'll be back to being a detective <laughs> but Wu has different plans you know <laughs> anyways uh, they come out and Wu is just acting like Wu and we can see like there's like a few Kuvira supporters you know Kuvira supporters great like wow and they try to throw pies at him I don't know what the hell like I at first I thought they were going to assassinate him or something but then they like bring out pies and throw at him I'm like oh my god what the hell <laughs> But yeah, Marco was able to help Wu out. And this probably made Wu change his mind. Wu was like, you know what? Marco helped me out so much. Uh, let me just bring him with me to Ba Sing Se as well. He'll, he'll protect me. <laughs> this was the deal breaker, breaking moment, you know, where he, he got so much confidence in Marco that he was like, yeah, like he, he'll be with me from here onwards. <laughs> Transfer him to Ba Sing Se. <laughs> oh my God. And, uh Wu, oh my god, <laughs> Wu sees the pie and he's like, oh my god, I've been wounded. Then he's like, oh, this is just strawberry pie. Then he's like, oh my god, I have allergy. 
And Mark was like, no, you don't. You have bee sting, like, you know, allergy and bee stings. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, it's kind of goofy. As I said, reminds me of Bolin so much. And, yeah. Hopefully, he, you know, he, he's, I, I really hope he, he turns out to be a nice person. Unlike his aunt. So, yeah. Anyways, um, here we see Kai and Opal trying to help all the people. And uh, in comes Kuvira, you know. And, uh, yeah, uh, Bolin and Opal meet. And here we get to see that the guy, uh, Opal's brother, big brother, and uh, like, you know, and Kuvia, they are engaged. You know, they're like his, his, his he's like his her fiance. And uh, like I don't under I don't know. Like you know, it seemed like they ran away, and Suyin was pretty furious about this. And uh, Suyin did trust Kuvira a lot, so that's why you know, like Opal said, like oh, you betrayed mother. Not only his brother, but Kuvia as well, you could say. And she's doing this all on his on her own or something. And uh, yeah, like I don't know what's going on between them. Like I feel like the, the guy probably likes him, likes uh, Kuvira, but I don't know about Kuvira. Like Kuvira seems like that type of a person who just loves herself. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of you know suspicious about if she really <laughs> likes him or not, or just using him for being you know like uh, affiliated with uh, Suyin and his and her family. He's is her son so maybe that's why she's just using him or something who knows we'll have to wait for that again before i come to like you know like try to judge either of them we'll have to wait we'll have to see if she really likes him or not or just using him because as i said she kuvia looks like the person like a person who just likes herself you know so who knows maybe i'm wrong we'll see and okay so here we can see like opal is not happy with kuvia at all and uh yeah, then Opal goes to the mayor or whatever and threatens him, Loki, threatens him. And it's like, oh, like, you know, like, you're going to do this, you'll be under my control. And, uh, yeah. And mayor was like, no, I'm not, like, you know, having that at all. Get out of my place. He's like, oh, you are going to become part of my, uh, like, you know, my place. Like, my, I'll unite you in my, under my banner. And you'll see. Uh, just threatens him and uh, yeah i am i'm pretty sure the ending the, the bandit in the end that tried to get away like you know, ran away with the food supplies it's probably kuvira's men so yeah okay now here we can see that opal is pretty pissed off with bolin and you know what about this whole thing i feel like bolin is just being tricked and he he genuinely thinks that oh like you know kuvira is doing this for everyone's betterment of you know and yeah so <clears throat> I'll like you know I'm, I'm I'm doing this for the world and I'm helping people out. He probably has no idea what Kuvira is planning. Like we as audience also have no idea what she's planning. All we know that she's trying to unite everyone and I don't know what she's trying to make like a kingdom or something like and try to rule the world probably something like that. But yeah, like Bolin probably doesn't realize any of that and he's genuinely confused like he, he does understand that Opal doesn't like Kuvira but at the same time he's thinking that oh we're doing this as a job, we're doing this to help people without knowing Kuvira's underlying desires. So yeah and Opal is not happy and Opal as Opal said like and I feel like he changed. It's not that he changed, I feel like yeah you could see he say he changed you know like we can see like we, we can see a little bit of Bolin's previous character personality but he has lost that goofy sense of humor and everything you could say like he's pretty serious I mean with his hair and all and he's like oh like Kuvira doesn't like it so I don't like this Bolin you know like he, he him Bolin being Bolin was really nice and him trying to just you know be serious like this and yeah I don't know like <sighs> So yeah, it's probably like, you know, as, as Opal said before, if you remember in the previous season, he, she said that you be you, you know, that's what I like about you. So seeing Bolin like this probably hurts her, I think. She doesn't like it. And she, she, she realizes that Bolin has been tricked and the fact that she cannot do anything about that is probably something that frustrates Opal. And uh, yeah. But yeah, anyways, enough about that. Uh, Opal and Kai ties to uh, help the people out with a little food supply. 
and uh, unfortunately a bandit comes in and here you go i'm pretty sure this bandit is one of kuvira's men because bandits don't have airplanes you know i and the first thing that i said at that moment i'm like what the hell like this bandit has an airplane like what type of a bandit is this and like and then he's like only one person one person was like you know using the like you know kind of piloting the airplane another person there's two of them i'm like what the hell is this and by the end of it i'm like all right it's probably kuvira's men you know one of them you know this guy was tasked to take them food supply away so that kuvira can just control the place and get them under her banner banner so yeah it's probably that and uh, there's a little battle here and kai tried to fight him off but unfortunately his thing got cut glider he was, he was almost falling to death but opal helped her out him out and yeah and he goes to the mayor and then uh kai is like sorry about it but unfortunately the food supply was taken away and yeah kubira comes in takes control while on the other side in republic not republic city but the air temple you see yeah mm, everyone's just waiting for Korra to come <laughs> milo Iki, and jinora milo's like oh i'm i've completely changed look at me <laughs> i'm a man now <laughs> oh my god while the, on the other side Wu is just you know probably telling bad jokes to <laughs> raiku and her and his wife and raiku is just playing along you know because no politics and uh, while here marco was like oh thank god i'll be like you know free of being his bodyguard <laughs> lin is like i'm sorry but raiku <laughs> just transferred you <laughs> to ba sing sen <laughs> because wu said that you were one of the best people so that's why he's trying to appease him uh, and using you uh, in his political game and yeah raiku as always not looking up to no good again uh but yeah, that's just him. Uh, so yeah, like everything's, you know, like going, I guess, well over there. You could say <laughs> only Marco's <laughs> having a bad time. But yeah, like you know, uh, everyone just is chilling over there. While on the other side, we see Kuvira's people come in. There's like mechanical robots and all, and Kuvira just like you know, like, you know, just un unfurls the flag or whatever. She's like, oh, this is our play. Like, you know, this is under my control now. Proclaim your loyalty or lose your position or whatever. And everything seems kind of, what can I say? Like, you know, like everyone's getting food now and everything. That's all nice. That's all well and good. You know, all the people who are starving, they're going to get food. But Kuvira's plan is something more. And uh, oh my God, I am really not looking forward to how this is going to go. Like here again, we can see like, you know, Bolin just handing over the food. He's so happy. As I said, he's probably thinking everything that he's doing here is for the greater good. But unfortunately, Kuvira has some other plans. So he is really troubled that he thinks that, yeah, I'm doing this all for the betterment of everyone. But Opal is not happy about this. But it's not that Opal is not happy about this. Opal is not happy about the fact that he is just, I don't know, like looking at this in a different perspective. Like Opal is... Under Opal understands that he's been tricked and he's also, she's probably also frustrated at herself for not being able to bring Bolin back something but yeah anyways um so okay on the other side uh Tenzin and they're like you know uh, we're just waiting for Korra to come in Tronrak is like oh hello there I know like uh Tenzin is like hello where is Korra Tronrak is like what Korra has already left six months ago and then it's like what he, she's not here and oh my god Korra is just out there you know just fighting in the ring and we can see that she is strong but she probably didn't get back her original strength or something because she just got defeated by someone and she's the avatar so i don't think that should happen <laughs> so yeah so he, she's probably just trying like you know trying and going here and there just training herself that's why she probably just left six months ago. And you know what? I feel like the uh, the poison probably affected her or something, and she probably lost her strength or something. Something like that happened. That's why she. I'm guessing she's just going around here and there, trying to fight and to get her strength back or something. I I don't know. Like I, it's probably something like that. 
So we'll see. You know, I'm 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 sure I get my answer. And he's just fighting in the rings and they're kind of earning money. And wait, is this the place where Toff fought before? I think so. I might be wrong though, but maybe this is the place. You know, the, the ring that we saw. Was this a place where once Aang and Toph fought? I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like that. Oh, you know what? He, since she's going around fighting in rings, maybe he, even if this is not the place where Toph fought, maybe she'll go to the place later on where Toph fought once. And uh, like we have been getting hints of Toph being alive. So maybe we'll also meet Toph in the future. Like this is the final season like either we meet her here or we don't meet her so i'm i'm hoping we get to meet Toph again i think that's probably what's going to happen we'll see about that but yeah that was it that was my reaction to uh, the final episode of season three and the first episode of season four um a great start um kuvira is going to be a problem and i really hope Cora gets back on his her feet again she is back on her feet but she still needs more time i guess so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. This was my reaction to The Legend of Korra, book 3, episode number 13, and book 4, episode number 1. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe. If you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below. Anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of The Legend of Korra. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.